So, um, good evening everyone, um, and I'm very excited to welcome you all to the opening of the 2019 Gates Walk Festival. Okay. 
face. And it really means so much to us as a steering committee to have such an amazing team of people so so devoutly committed and like warmly sincere about making Jane's Walk as great as it has been and can continue to be. So we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. I want to tell you that around the world this weekend there will be uh, close to 250 walks in probably 50 cities. Uh, sorry, 250 cities, that's wrong, 250 cities, 50 countries around the world will celebrate James Walk this weekend. And uh, that's a real testament to the ongoing legacy of Jane Jacobs and for all of the reasons why we fall in love with uh, James Walk to begin with. Um, and it's a little cheeky, and I'm not from here originally, but I have adopted Toronto as my city, so I can say yes. there's nothing like <laughs> there's nothing like James Walk in Toronto. So uh, it's very exciting to host uh, James Walk in Toronto, and um, as such, it is my sincere uh, honor and privilege also to thank our three main champions for making Jane's Walk uh, Toronto happen. They are the Urban Space uh, Property Group, Margie Zeidler, uh, the Maytree Foundation and also the Metcalf Foundation that made it possible for us to host Jane's Walk this year and for many years actually. Strong champions as many of you know uh, throughout the city and uh, throughout our province also. Um, alongside the Islington BIA, are they here? Because they've been amazing partners over the last few years, really amazing. And uh, also the fabulous party sponsors as well, beer, wine, uh, food, etc. Um, we know the festival is going to be a great success. Uh, equally, I want to acknowledge and thank our friends from Sides Canada, uh, for being here tonight. Um, for hosting the project and uh, ensuring that we have the success and growth for the years to come, we hope, of course. Um, now, who here is organizing a walk this weekend? <laughs> person to show you those secrets that are so revealing that are right in front of you but you wouldn't know unless someone pointed them out. Amazing!
to avoid the kind of suburban sprawl that's happening in Melbourne and Sydney right now. And it reminded me, of, like a couple of years ago, his passion was there's a big uh, uh, retail and housing development right near where I grew up. And he's like, well, and he's got a, you know, he's there like writing to the council about how there has to be um, certain a uh, certain amount of space between the sidewalk and the houses and there has to be more parkland through it and his name is through all the city council reports and I just think, you know, whenever I think about how did I end up uh, interested in James Bond, <laughs> I think of my dad and I think, well, how could I possibly avoid it, you know? Um, and so I really thank him for that passion to see uh, not just the cities in front of us, but to participate in it actively and to make sure that um, there may be a development going on, but we have uh, uh, not just a, a, the responsibility, but also like the right to participate in those city organizing processes and to fight for um, what we think is the right way to design our city. So, um, so that's why uh, that's why I'm here tonight. And um, before I don't want to go on too long, but just to say, um, I too am organising a walk tomorrow uh, afternoon um, in the in the East End, not really the East End of Toronto, but just across the dawn, you, you know, people correct me all the time, which is important. Um, it's in Leslieville, and uh, so I'm organizing a, a, a queer history walk through the streets of Leslieville up into Riverdale from the toolbox, if anybody knows it, where it used to be, all the way up to the Metropolitan Community Church, uh, just above Gerard Street. And uh, what's important to that, the, what's important about it to me is that um, we have a city where uh, being seen and, and being heard in our communities, um, it's returned a lot to me uh, in the last 14 years that I've lived here. And uh, it's amazing, you know, I put out the word that I was going to do this queer history walk through the streets of Leslieville, and there's an abundance of history that is being returned to me as a result. And uh, that's what makes James Walk really spectacular and really special. And so, um, in that spirit, I hope that you all find um, that wherever you are this weekend, that is what is returned to you, the sort of the warmth and the generosity and the history and the, and the sort of uh, magic that the city has to offer you guys. So on behalf of the steering committee, thank you for participating, thank you for leading the walks, and happy walking this weekend. Woo!
James Walk Festival. I'm thrilled to be here. And I just want to thank everybody who is leading a walk this weekend for making communities, spaces, and people's stories feel seen. So as I was thinking about what I wanted to say this evening, I thought it would be fitting to go for a walk. So I put on my winter jacket, even though it's spring, and uh, really seriously considered wearing my snow boots, packing an umbrella, because it's Toronto, um, and I stepped outside my house. The first thing that I saw was a for sale sign on my front lawn. My landlord has decided to sell his property, so as a renter, that means I have to leave. <laughs> this is my third time moving in 18 months. Twice because my landlord was selling their property, and once because a landlord was moving in a family member. Each time, each time, I've had to enter a higher price market and pay for the time, cost, and emotional stress of moving. I kept walking. I crossed the street and I looked over at the playground, which I don't, I don't know if anyone here lives in the annex, but if you haven't been to John Syllabus Square Park, Sibelius, Sibelius, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually, it's really sweet. It's like, there's a rock climbing gym, there's swings, there's nets, um, and I was feeling like a little playful, but I felt like the, un I was mindful that the unspoken rules of the space was that it's for children to play and for adults to watch. So I kept walking. I decided to go to the Spadina Library to pick up some books. But when I arrived, I found it was closed on Sundays and Mondays, and generally closes around 6.30 p.m. And so as a freelancer with really odd hours, it's actually really challenging for me to make it to my local library. I crossed the street on Bloor, and I looked up at the Nadal Jewish Community Center. And for a second, I imagined what it would look like to have a South Asian community center in the downtown core. And so in that moment, I checked in with myself. And I realized I actually don't feel fully seen in my neighborhood. I really love my neighborhood. It's really green. It's very conveniently located. There's a 24-7 metro. But I reflected on the impact of not feeling fully seen in terms of how I contributed to the neighborhood rather than just living in the neighborhood. So in a very short walk, I confronted my lack of systemic power in housing, public space, choice of employment, and cultural representation. At a very micro level, I experience what happens when we allow power to be at the center of how our cities and communities are shaped. We dehumanize in the process. We call homes real estate. We say play and leisure is limited to some. We decide libraries and the people that depend on them are dispensable. We grant some communities to take up more space. Cities will always hold the tension between power systems and citizens. And as we know here, the power is immense. It can feel like a tidal wave, like you're being swallowed. The only difference is how citizens choose to collaborate, co-create, mobilize, and use their collective energy to confront the power. When I dream about the future of Toronto, the future of our communities, I see us collectively evolving into a higher state of awareness that allows us to ask harder questions of who is being seen and prioritized and who is not, whose stories we are telling and whose stories we are not, where we are centering power over the individual, the family, our communities, the land, the soil, the air, and the trees. Because if a city is awakened and aware of itself, its citizens are also awakened and aware of it themselves. You may be wondering, what does it mean to be seen? To me, it means for all the parts of you to be known. 
The more we feel seen and reflected in our cities, the safer we feel. When we feel safer, we want to express ourselves more. When we express ourselves more, we want to contribute and serve. This is true in our friendships, this is true in our romantic relationships, our families, our workplaces. This is also true in our city. A few years ago, I co-produced a four-day festival at Honest Ed's to mark the closing of the iconic building with Negan Serafi, Abdul Dalla.